I think it's really important that people start out playing safe. So, so we the first to... one, <laughs> we was to start with... obviously, it's gonna be. The girls are still wearing the clothing, unfortunately. A fantasy of mine is like a gang bang. That's just hot to me. This week, uh, we have a Tara topic. We're going to talk about being... Tara topic. It's a Tara topic. Okay, <laughs> so, bitches. Love you. Wow. Gave Tara gets Welcome to you. Sex Uninterrupted with Tara and James. I'm Tara. And I'm James. And we are your sexy, swinging lifestyle hosts. We are here to empower you to explore your sexuality and learn more about non-traditional relationships. The Swinger lifestyle has transformed our life. Meeting each other has shattered everything we thought about normal relationships. Maneuvering our way through non-monogamy has transformed our view on sexuality, relationships, and sex. We produce a show every week for your listening pleasure, and our sponsors make this all possible. We truly appreciate their generosity and everything they do to support us. If you're interested in sponsoring our show, contact us at sex.uninterrupted at gmail.com. If you like our show, get social with us. We're always available online. Our Instagram is sex.uninterrupted, and we love to share our sexy stories all day long. We have a Twitter account, SXUninterrupted, <laughs> where we share our racier content and a Facebook-like page. If you go to our website, sexuninterrupted.com, you can find all the links and all the deets. Awesome. Dirty deets. Okay, James, are you going to tell us what it is? It's the smoke show! <laughs> Like always, we are medical patients, and one of our places that we like to get our cannabis from is Tilray. This week, we are smoking one of our favorites, Pink Kush. It is an indica-dominant hybrid with a powerful body-focused effect. Yes, it is. So it makes it really good sex week. The potency of the strain can be considered overpowering to a lot of people, and even small doses are known to eliminate pain, insomnia, and appetite loss start with microdosing when trying this strain out <laughs> yeah because it'll knock you on your yeah, ass it's recommended it to a few people and they're like "Ooh, took too much so last week we had our friends Alyssa and aaron on our show from the academy of tantric science <laughs> this opened up our tantric lifestyle and renewed the basics of what tantra is I think we all learned that it is much deeper and a larger topic than we expected, which is why we brought them back onto the show That's to discuss good. further the applications of Tantra and the non-monogamous community. And how to pronounce it, too. Yeah, Tantra, because <laughs> I've been saying it wrong my whole life. If you have not listened to our last week's episode, we recommend that you go and listen to that first. It will help you understand what Tantra is. So this week, we are actually going to talk about the applications of Tantra within the non-monogamy community. Also, stay tuned for the end of the show because we're going to be sharing the contest and you have the chance to win some great products. Go to the sexylifestyle.com contest page to enter. And now, without further ado, again, we'd like to welcome Aaron and Alyssa to the show. Welcome, guys. Hey, thank Hello you. Again. Glad to have you back. Thanks. Glad you guys could actually make the time to come. I appreciate it. Um, so We weren't planning this, by the way. No. So this was spontaneous. <laughs> we weren't expecting it to be two parts, but... I think that's that's the good part about it, though. Good. Yeah. Yeah, we're happy we could do it that way. Yeah, I Absolutely. think so. So, last week we talked a lot about kind of what Tantra is and Neo-Tantra and... A bunch of different practices. Now we the want foundations. To, yeah, kind of the foundation because you you spoke so like it was just an amazing talk. I I was just dumbfounded after listening to it again. So we're going to talk about how to implement some of these practices that we talked about last time into sort of you as an individual. We'll start out that way. How to in incorporate the practice? Yeah, as an individual. Yeah. So what like kind of practices would you recommend as an individual who wants to experience something in the tantric sciences? I think that as an individual, this is where you want to start. You want to start as the individual. You can't start with a partner. Right. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. So you do need to start as an individual and... That could, if you want to get like really foundational, like I think maybe we talked about last week, that would probably start with some mindfulness-based practices. We talked specifically like hatha yoga, 
or yoga based pa- practices that's a good place to start is developing uh, the awareness that's necessary to um, traverse these techniques in this practice and you get that you get that in yoga you need some body awareness we need to get like body awareness reestablish mm-hmm. connection to the breath that's I would say start with breathing the breath yeah. breathing is really start important. with the breath yeah. Yeah. See, Alyssa gives simple answers. <laughs> That's like all effective. I would say. No, I don't mean, I don't mean simple, like, uh, effective, simple, to the point. Yeah. I'll stop talking. You should. No, that's okay. That's where I would start. Just, like Aaron said, awareness. So you can be aware of your physical body. Very simple. Feel your seat. Feel your feet if you're standing. And the breath. Just notice. So it's more becoming self-aware. Yes. Very much so, right? And being understanding the space that you're in so is there a specific type of yoga like i know we talked a little bit last time but is there a specific type of yoga that will get you into a more i guess intimate space with yourself okay let's say you're uh, i teach i teach for men based on this idea i have something i have something for this so what i would do if i was going to retrain myself or do my own self practice let's call it like a masturbation meditation okay let's go there this so you're going to start with a masturbation meditation you want to go into your masturbation meditation where the intention is or the purpose or the benefit is this awakening this great awakening of energy you don't want to go into it um bound in your stress and your tension so you don't show up to your masturbation meditation after let's say you just spent a day at work and then you've fed yourself or your kids or whatever dinner and did all the stuff that people do now you have a couple hours at night you're not just going to go and and have this big profound masturbation meditation that makes sense right you're too bound in your attention and take some unwinding there has to be an unwinding that takes place before any of this so you could do lots of things you could do like some sun salutations if you're into yoga you could dance Maybe you like to dance. Mm-hmm. You don't want to swing or flail your body around the room or shake. You want to shake all your joints out and shake your body. And I personally love to use, maybe I said this last episode that we talked, uh, some Qigong stuff, uh, like yeah, Tai Chi yeah. stuff. Yeah, you like that, yeah. I find, uh, even with my background in yoga, I find, uh, I consider that yoga as well, really, but I find that that's so effective at rebalancing the energy or uh, freeing the energy or Uh releasing stress energy uh, stuck energy repressed energy uh, energy gets stuck in the energy body in the physical body and in the mind this energy when it gets stuck then we we're very fragmented in our thoughts and um, we're very disconnected from our body and from our sense of body and our breath does not function the way that it's meant to function and so uh, step number one is to get the energy more balanced whatever that I don't want to say is, it has to be this method or that method no so that's what like we that, there's, but, no, there's no right way to yeah. s- like even swing so I like right. the idea of dance too because I think a lot of people can yes. apply that easily and I know um, when I lived alone I like to dance a lot. Like, mm-hmm. I always was dancing. I think I dance less now that we're living together just because, I don't know, you're busier, it's, you're more distracted. When you're I think we, we still dance when we're, like, in no, the kitchen making dinner. No, I used to dance dinner. all the time, especially, like, getting dressed up yeah. and then dancing. And then I find, like, I was... With- with like girls just want to have fun playing in <laughs> yeah no no not like that yeah. but not like 1980s movie no cliche. no like dirty okay. rap okay <laughs> <laughs> she likes to I get love down my with it rap, that's for sure is is there any specific music maybe that somebody should listen to if they're trying to be silence, intimate with themselves silence is nice and also not always that nice <laughs> uh, but I depends on the music people. is a good way to transition from one thing like you said you just get home from work so um putting on something that gets you in the mood for what you want to be doing whether that's dirty rap or nice mantras playing or classical or ambient yeah. or whatever yeah whatever whatever is whatever could probably, you want to move. Uh, if you're t- if we're talking in a meditative sense then something that's 
uh, more conducive to relaxation mm -hmm. so like gangster rap wouldn't really work obviously if you're like trying to really get into your body That's and really true. be in your breath right and it so, could help you like shake off oh if you're talking, yeah. if you're talking about like the yeah. shake up or the and shake then, it off yeah. stage yeah 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 whatever dance it out and so out. in that moment and then after i guess you get become in contact and moving those energies mm -hmm. how do you become more intimate with yourself okay well, so yeah you were going to talk about your the masturbation mm -hmm. we'll go there yeah <laughs> so after some time spent doing whatever to release the energy free the energy then i would begin uh, teaching or leading people through or myself going through a, a ritual process is a ritual that starts with becoming still and in my own way in a tantric way we're looking at tantra there's a lot of work with the energy centers and the elements in the tantric body we don't just consider just the physical body and the energy body it's more like the physical body which is and the energy body which is made of the elements so there's definitely uh, almost always a focus on that purifying the elements or, mm -hmm. or it's a it's a way of of tuning into the natural forces that are within all of us and everything everything is made of these elements so there would be a so a, your rituals would be um, like in my own rituals there would be a lot of that i would also use a lot of mantra yeah, like we talked about last time, that sort of... Chanting of mantra, yeah. Using the voice. It doesn't need to be, maybe it, I, sh I don't want to suggest that it needs to be Sanskrit mantras, but um, if we're talking about in a purely classical tantric sense, then it would be Sanskrit mantra. Uh, if we're opening it up, broadening it a bit through a neo-tantric... Uh, method than the chanting or singing of giving a voice to releasing the energy or freeing the energy that is is the voice people can chant ohms some people are comfortable with ohms mm -hmm. right these mantras and sound is a very potent way of again tuning into these natural forces that are everything that are within yeah. everything right. everything is vibration everything mm -hmm. is sound everything is made of sound so in tantra there's a lot of use of mantra um, f for that reason we're using sound vibration to act as like a key to unlock within us a pattern of consciousness a yeah. pattern of energy so i would go that direction and then i would probably start working with the breath get into breath work Mm -hmm. Various various techniques for that that you can learn in, in the Tantra world, the different yogic pranayams or breathing techniques. Or, I know in Neo-Tantra a lot, techniques like the orbit breath. I'm sure you've mm -hmm. seen or heard of orbit breathing, no, in, in Tantra. I just know the nostril one. Like? Yeah, that's a good way yeah. of balancing the energy. Yeah. Balancing the energy so that yeah. it's a method to get to where we're describing for an individual and then we're going to get to that point where we're then coming in contact with either your spiritual self or like yourself yourself and touching yourself what do you mean well i, I mean like, like physically sexually yeah. yeah yeah basically there's a lot of setting things up there's ritual and maybe like, it's not it, as exciting once you describe it no the people it's all this, <laughs> over the radio all over the radio in, intentional um, ways a lot of intention. There's a lot of intention. There's a lot of clearing of energy and moving of energy and preparing of body and energy because that's yeah. what we're working with is 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 the primal sexual energy that is everything. And the preparation everything is this. makes the difference. Preparation makes all the difference. The the method um, through which one performs their ritual is 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 key. Yeah. To all of this their ritual whatever that means i'm not saying it has to look like this this or this but no that's awesome and we're gonna have to cut to a quick commercial break so that was kind of in tune with yourself and uh next we're gonna bring up after the break uh kind of getting in tune with yourself and your partner your relationship and your relationship so stay tuned after the break
We are a busy couple. When we aren't working on our radio show, you can find us hosting events and traveling the world. Downtime and connection is important to us, and that's why we're so happy to have a high massager in our house. The high massager is a unique personal massager that can be used fully clothed. It helps men and women relax amazingly fast and has the power to give women some of the most intense orgasms ever. We love decompressing in the evenings with ours, and it gives us a deep and restful sleep that we need to keep our energy high. Want to get one of your own? We were able to hook our listeners up with $100 US off when you use the code SEXUNINTERRUPTED with no spaces at checkout. Go to sexuninterrupted.com slash sextoyshop to get yours today. Welcome back to Sex Uninterrupted with Tara and James. Uh, we have Aaron and Alyssa in the studio from the Academy of Tantric Science. We've been talking about becoming more present with yourself, and we're going to continue with that conversation. So we're going to talk about... We'll just hand it over. Hand it back over to you, Aaron. <laughs> yeah. As you've been uh, talking about, uh, I guess, the, the orgasmic... What is it? Masturbation. Ma- it? Masturbation meditation we yes. were talking about. Yes. And then we were talking about on the break being presence. Yes. Yeah. What it means to truly be presence, and uh, which is really like the whole basis of mindful masturbation. Or That's what it was. Mindful masturbation. Masturbation, meditation, or whatever <laughs> we're calling it, which is... Which is, as we've described so far, like a process of, of preparing your body, preparing your energy, and um, through ritual, creating a connection with the natural forces of, of the world, of self. And, um, and then from there, with this new awareness, with this expanded or enhanced flow of energy, uh, using the body and the sensations and the breath, to experience or experiencing the self I should say experiencing the self through the body and the sensations and via the breath we should say it's like yeah. breath acts as the vehicle for consciousness for awareness for like attention feeling your breath in yeah your because body. breath yeah. and attention they're the same they're not actually separate things breath and awareness it's the same thing same stuff so there's different ways you can approach it. I don't know how uh, this is where people get to re-explore, explore the ways that they like to be touched and they may not be sure and this is the whole point of it. So is it a male massaging the body, massaging self-massage? Like don't just go straight in for the cock. Mm -hmm. You know, touch your legs, touch your stomach, like massage yourself. Where somebody else might touch you, so it almost gets you in tune with how you would want to be touched if it was somebody else and learning how to almost like feel What are you just feeling? Like, what else do I feel? When I touch here like this, what does it feel like? When I touch here like this, what does it feel like? Oh, I like that. Oh, I've never been touched like that. Oh, that's interesting. You're also increasing the flow of blood and of energy to these areas by massaging, self-massaging. So explore the anus, genitals. We're men... Us men are so myopically focused on the cock and ejaculation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very just, much that's, so. that's how we we're taught. That's how we we're conditioned, right? Yeah. Well, when I was younger, I played with my asshole, but it's probably not like it most people. I don't know. Because most boys wouldn't talk about it. No. No, you wouldn't right. sit around with your friends and be like, hey, I, so I was tickling my, my asshole the other my day. Finger on my ass. <laughs> I was tickling my asshole. And I was, no, you wouldn't say that. With, you, you, you'd be made fun of. You'd be shamed by yeah. the group. Of course. It's true. Yeah, so and that is that's the case for uh, for everybody, and so this uh, mindful masturbation or masturbation meditation is is uh, a great way to re-explore your own sensations and Explore. your own touch. I would say slow down, just compared to what you normally probably do <laughs> for everybody. Well, slow it's down. like good turn. Grab your phone, turn on the porn channel. Yeah, grab your cock. Yes. Wait till it gets hard, and then make it go. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, so, <laughs> like, so there's no porn allowed in, in the in in the masturbation meditation. It's completely porn free. It's all you. It's all you mm-hmm. and your own sensations and your own mm-hmm. breath and your own awareness. Mm-hmm. In fact, I would go as far to say, and maybe this has maybe this goes in sta- I don't, in steps and stages. You work at your own pace. Um, I would even recommend 
doing this without mental fantasy, without mental imagery of anything. Well, that's, that's what like, we talked about. Yeah, we talked. We had talked about that because for me, it's like my favorite place to masturbate is the shower, and I think that it's the best place for me one because it's easy cleanup but at the same time it's also i'm using my mental thoughts and not like almost desensitizing myself to sex in a sense where i'm actually like either thinking about something that i want to have happen and mentalizing that or i'm actually thinking about the past but i'm not desensitizing myself to sex by like watching porn in a sense right. which we talked so, about i mean bring up a, a, a interesting thing because and you said it, you're either thinking about something in the future, so there's uh, this desire, there is this projection to the future, or you're thinking about something in the past. And so on both ends of those is 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 not the present. <laughs> right? Yes. Exactly. You know what I mean? No, but I get it. And that's, that's the nature of the mind. That's not you. That's the nature no, of the it. mind. The mind yeah. lives in the... In, and this is the, the reason we suffer as humans, is that we either are living in the future or living in the, in the past. Yeah. Because the only thing that exists, which is all illusion and none of it exists, right? right. So the, the, the yogis, the Buddhists, what they would say, this is the cause of our suffering. And if you uh, watch close enough, you'll see this is definitely the cause of my suffering, the, the craziness that is like, up there in the brain think about and the that thoughts. for a moment. Oh, yeah. The past does not exist. We neither. don't have it. It yeah. just doesn't. And neither does the future. Neither does the future. This, right? Oh, but, no. but how do we base our identifications off of? What do we, how do we think of, how do you think of what makes, what makes up you, who you are? If you like a, a collection well, of memories. All you do is connection of memories of the past and that's what you look back to. And it's the same thing that I would do. It's almost like watching porn in my head. It's all like the mental imagery of what I've experienced. But again, it still doesn't, it's not existing right now in right. this moment. So what you're saying is become more present in this moment while you're masturbating. So it's, you're not thinking about the future. You're not thinking about the past. You're becoming more aligned with exactly what's happening right now and how it feels. And the doorway to that is feeling mm -hmm. sensation. Right. Yeah, like how I tend to masturbate. It's like feeling, my, and even yeah. that's how I would orgasm too, is I have to really focus on how it feels in my body. Just so you want to, I know this is m maybe um, easier for most women, I'm guessing I shouldn't generalize, and for men is uh, definitely not the way that most of us, probably all of us, masturbate, which... Uh, is like we're talking about usually through with pornography mm -hmm. um, so to recover the sense of like feeling and sensation through these practices through these mindful masturbation practices um can take time it's a deconditioning yeah. process it's a practice it's, it's a practice, it's a practice. It's called a practice. Yeah. but i i would love to suggest that we come to the point where we are able as men i'm speaking as men and Alyssa can speak uh, maybe to a different point of, on this, but as men that we're able to masturbate purely on the sensations that we're experiencing at that moment, that, that those sensations in the moment, and I know that men are also very visual, um, so even like the vision, the image of like your cock in your hands, and that itself mm -hmm. being like a source of, of arousal, that mm -hmm. imagery of your own body, your own, like the feeling, the sense, like hold it, feel it, like know what it feels like. And no goal of orgasm. Don't chase the orgasm. No bearing down, no, no thrusting your pelvis, no trying to force it, no squeezing your legs, no clenching your quadriceps or your glutes or your pelvic floor uh, through the practice while remaining completely connected to your sensations and breath. Every muscle, I don't want to say every muscle, but nearly every muscle in your body, especially around the pelvic area and the lower back, abdominal, pelvic floor area, completely relaxed. So no, for women, for women well. too. Yeah. If you try to have an orgasm with no fantasizing, no... I just said trying, but no trying to have an orgasm. If you masturbate with no goal of an orgasm, then you just relax into it and let it happen. It will be, especially while breathing. I'm going to try this tomorrow. Really feeling, yeah. It'll be one <laughs> of the Out of body. Yes. So this is what when people advertise, like, out of or full-bodied, like, bliss, tantric orgasms. Mm -hmm. When your breath is moving freely and your energy is, like, balanced and open and moving and the breath continues to move and you're not clenching muscles or bearing down or like, which is essentially restricting or the flow of energy when yeah. you're clenching, when things are getting tight. So when everything is completely and absolutely relaxed, which includes like the natural, easy rhythm of breath, free flow of breath, then this is how that sexual energy like, whoosh, 
it's takes powerful. over is like uh, mm-hmm. pure electricity yeah. out of body full bodied yeah it's a you lose yourself and you know this from orgasms already and uh, if you can be really really aware while you're orgasming or like right before the moment of orgasm um there's a moment however long it's different for different people and at different times obviously you lose all sense of little self of ego self of that personality that we're talking about or the the conceptualized yeah. individual based on those memories all that stuff disappears all the noise in the head disappears yeah. and for those few moments you are this you are pure awareness pure presence pure consciousness pure self and so the goal is to reach that and hold on to it for an extended period of time yes yeah but in a sense like you you want to be in that present moment and that and like you said it's right before you orgasm and then the, technically the goal is to reach that from the beginning and be able to sustain that sort of presence of mind to be almost in a nothing space but yet connected. it's a void it's a void space yeah, completely but, connected but most still connected, connected. Yeah, it's yeah. the most connected space but it's a void it's an it's uh, electric mm. pulses but it's void space meaning uh, void space is not like describable in, no, it's, in it's language. Like it's we can almost, use language to try to describe it. It's not necessarily nothing, but it's, it's still... Everything. Yeah, it's everything. Yeah. Nothing. Well, <laughs> nothing but everything. Nothing but everything. Yeah, we're getting philosophical. So this is why it's so important. Well, I think we touched on this last week. This is why it's so important, men, that we don't orgasm. Especially right. like so quickly. Because this... But as soon as you orgasm, all that energy you've been building, you throw it right out of you. <laughs> Gone. So you just spend this whole like that. two we hours in this ritual building all this energy and now you've been masturbating mindfully for who knows how long you can do it as long as you want and edge as long as you want and eventually learn to have orgasms without ejaculating and you can do this so I don't know however much time you have to masturbate but um, <laughs> it takes all me 40 day. minutes but <laughs> as soon as you do or- orgasm and ejaculate all that energy gone gone yeah. Wow. So imagine so building to- all that energy and you're actually in that pre-orgasm state where you're like pure self, pure self, and then you don't ever ejaculate and you end the session and you go on about your day. That charge Just can be it. probably empowering. That's probably, yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. You should try it. Anyways, but we have to cut to a quick commercial break. Okay. <laughs> Before Tara tells me that I have to just try everything. Um, <laughs> just suggesting it. Just suggesting. Uh, yes, after a quick commercial break, we'll be back, and we're going to talk probably more about incorporating this with your partner now. Yes. So uh, stay tuned after the break. This year at Naughty and Nolan's 2019, we had an emotional moment when we were crowned king and queen of the event. NIN is one of our favorite events, and it was an honor to be involved and recognized in the community. Next year, we will be returning to hand off our crowns, and we want you to join. Come to Naughty and Nolan's with us July 8th to 12th, 2020, and see why we keep coming back every year. Plus, when you get tickets through us, We will send you a personal thank you email and add you to our NIN mailing list and help you prepare for NIN 2020. Visit sexuninterrupted.com slash naughty to book today. Travel, events, parties, and clubs are a huge part of the lifestyle. It's how you connect with the community, but sometimes it can be hard to find out what's going on, especially when you're traveling and don't know what's out there. That's where Cassidy comes in. If you're looking to attend club events, meetups, resort takeovers, hotel takeovers, you name it, Cassidy makes it so easy to search. We also like the fact that you can post your travel calendar or rendezvous so people can see if you're visiting their city or if they're feeling frisky. So go to Cassidy.com, K-A-S-I-D-I-E.com and use the code A-Z-Sexy, A-Z-S-E-X-Y for a free 30-day elite membership today. You are listening to Sex Uninterrupted with Tara and James. This week we have Alyssa and Erin on the show and they are, they're sharing a lot about Tantra again and kind of how to apply it to, to your life, to your relationship. So we just finished talking about how to apply it to your individual self 
and now we're going to talk about how it can be applied to non-monogamy and also things you can do in your partnership to I, I, I guess benefit from the practice of Tantra yeah so so we started off by getting into the zone mm-hmm. as I'm gonna call it mm-hmm. so now we're in the zone the mm-hmm. zone <laughs> so now how do we I guess express that to one our partner and then be able to share that with other if you are non-monogamous to share that with other partners how do we find a way to become that present with somebody else when you're so or bring these techniques into yeah I think it's so I think it's the most important uh, thing that could be brought into the non-monogamy world yeah. I think it's the thing that I noticed um, is missing the most from any experiences we've had with other people and just by observing uh, like we don't tend to like go out and, and play in like public spaces but just observing public spaces that uh, hotel type events or w- yeah. whatever clubs that type of stuff it's it's obviously missing there seems to be uh just uh, get right to it get to the sex stuff well, yeah. and that's thing kind of happening. that's I, I call the 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 biggest downfall of what the i guess the swinger lifestyle or even the lifestyle or any sort of like that sort of non-monogamous community it's all about like you know um meaningless sex in a sense almost like where it just is uh, I'm trying to get to a point where I'm thinking of an idea and I'm just, it's not coming through in the same way I wanted it to. But what I'm trying to say is, is like, it's the biggest problem that the lifestyle has is that everybody assumes it's all about sex and getting to the sex as quick as possible and getting to that point where... Yeah, that, that bores me. Yeah, I'm sure some people love it that way. Yeah. It obviously works. Totally. Yeah. But yes. we found it was... It's not for- It was far less exciting. It's not exciting to me expected. at all. Yeah. Right. That's what we kind of talked about in our first episode on the Sexy Lifestyle Network was that we wanted what we thought was like almost modern swinging. What it was mm-hmm. like kind of coming into a more connected swinging. and Conscious more swinging. Yeah, there you sure. go. Sure. Mm-hmm. So that, wouldn't it be nice then? Let's say, let's say then you uh, have have met a couple. You as a couple have met a couple, right? And you're interested, and you've hung out a few times, and you uh, go. Are, are maybe ready to play explore. together, yeah. explore mm-hmm. together. So wouldn't it be beautiful if you all just took some time to completely sober, move your bodies, move your energy, release some stress, whatever, if it's do relaxation exercises and just like chill out, like really get like actually relaxed and, and chill. Um, well, there were some people that we've talked to even before in the past that, they they like they find out a lot about somebody and if they're thinking about playing with them through dance and dance is something that very gets somebody even more connected to understanding if they want to play with them or not we met uh, in naughty new orleans we met some people that were that was there for almost their foreplay dance. was mm-hmm. to just dance with somebody is to get into like a rhythm with somebody and be able to maintain that rhythm with somebody and move together so it's almost like becoming connected in that way it is through, connecting rhythm yeah. rhythms connecting you're right. making that non-sexual connection before moving to the sex mm-hmm. yeah. yeah so let's say you connect that way you move you're dancing together and now you take some time to like sit across from each other and look at each other and really see the other person like really see them maybe put your hands on them in a non-sexual way or put your hands on each other or or when we first various non-sexual ways talk talk to each other in, in order to create a safe space a more mindful space a space with more intention where you uh, where you actually sit and look at each other and can say you know I have these boundaries or this is something that I'm okay with doing or not okay with doing these you know uh, or things you want these are things I want or things I don't want or maybe I don't know and and you can share with each other the four of you or the six of you or the eight of you <laughs> openly and while looking at each other and well that was one of the first things that we experienced when we took a tantric course was um it was almost sitting down and it was between the two of us but it was like so i want you to touch the it was i want so for it was me the wheel of consent. yeah touching her the way that 
she wants to be touched. So she's trying to communicate to me the way she wants to be touched. And then for the next five minutes was, uh, I touch her the way I want to touch her, right? So it's almost like- For your pleasure. Yes, for yes. my pleasure. So I'm gonna <clears throat> touch her for my pleasure. And then it was a combination of the And then the I two. ask you what you, how you wanted to be touched. Yeah. And, and then was, I touch you the way that, that, that would be a great you. exercise to do with, with, a, with a new couple. You met this new couple, you have had a few dates, and you want to just play yeah. some like games that are not, that are not necessarily completely non-sexual, but, um, but it's not just like, okay, now when are we going to fuck? Yeah. Right. yeah. You, you know, you're actually taking time to be with another person, to look at them, to see them as, as a being. For who they are, yeah. Not as an object. To fuck, hey, this, I might get to have sex with this person now. You know what I mean? This is oh you can actually like acknowledge them as a being right. that is filled with the same consciousness as your own, the same awareness as your own, the same heart as your own. Mm -hmm. You need to break down some of these walls, separate us. This is meant to unite us. This tantra stuff, this yoga stuff, this the sexual stuff, the sexual. It's all. Its intention is the same thing to to remove the illusion of duality and to bring about unification and, and having uh, sex or play or whatever is no different whether it's non-monogamous or monogamous I should say mm -hmm. it should be no different right doesn't necessarily work that way but no and sometimes yet. it doesn't and we understand that that everybody's mm -hmm. like different strokes for different folks and different strokes for different folks and you know well, we're, we're trying to just tap into like because it worked for us on learning each other more like for me as I said like very sexual individual there's other cups to fill and I only have filled up one cup but I want to fill up the other ones and learn how to do that so then you like even by just doing this a couple of times even with you as just a partner you can find out how you want to be touched and then even as a guy like if you're entering the non-monogamous community like going to the other guy and be like she really likes to be touched like this and it would be easy to communicate that Again, if you've experienced that as a couple, so almost like starting out... Or yourself. Exactly. So starting out with yourself. You know what you like. Getting yeah. in touch with that, what you like. That's the self-massage. Yeah. And then progressing into the couple's aspect is learning to communicate how you did touch yourself when you were connecting with yourself. Yeah. And then going in further and incorporating other people. But again, that's easy for a guy like... For me, like when we, if we've ever had a conversation and we ever were on the plane of potentially playing along those lines, that it would be, I can communicate to you how Tara likes to get touched and you could potentially communicate with me how Alyssa likes to get touched. And now we're breaking down like the barriers of like easier ways of getting to one, the sex, if that's what you're into, but more intimacy and what I like to call meaningful sex. Because then it's actually something that you want to go and do, and it's not something you just feel like you're obligated to because you're in that moment. I like this whole path. I'm, I like I'm it. I would like to see like before any like couple partner swapping happens. I'd love to see the men sitting across from each other first, and uh, maybe not every time, but as an <laughs> exercise, and the women not with any like total non-sexual intentions. But I would like to Sick see the men life. touching hearts and eye gazing and mm -hmm. and creating a safe space between them as individuals and then uh, you know if there if and when there is swapping of partners if assuming we're talking about um two men two women i think to see and practice connecting the two opposite pairs, I hope this yeah. isn't confusing, the two opposite Cannot, pairs yeah. connecting them so that they can ex communicate the stuff between each other so so that you can communicate to me how you like to be touched and yeah. so let's communi commu can communicate to you how she likes to be touched uh, yes we right. can have that conversation but uh, wouldn't it be even more meaningful if like uh, if she's getting the opportunity to practice communicating and speaking up for or just yeah. describing what and what she wants and a list gets the same and i get to do the same and you get to do the same and then we've had all this time connecting and and just right it was, I, now we're taking time and i assume this probably would help with taking a, a lot of the jealousy and negative feelings sometimes people experience while they're while they're exploring this sort of lifestyle too because you're taking that time to recognize that person and you're not seeing them as competition or or doing something that yeah. you can't do or doing something different and 
it, yeah. it's, connecting we, takes a lot of the jealousy out of it. I, I, find. I think so. Uh, for me to be in this practice, to explore other people and to, um, I need to know, I need to feel and see that Alyssa is not being apprehended like an object. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't... No, it's not another notch on the belt. And we, I completely uh, understand what you're saying. I That's want like, her to be seen and I want to be seen. We, and yeah. I'm going to practice presence in these spaces and see the people that I'm with. And, uh, and I like to... That's what I'm saying. I think it's important for the men to also like connect, s- connect. Yeah. And mm-hmm. Well, and like that's that was the thing for me when I first started in this. I always wanted to do it with like friends because it was like you know you get to high five and do your thing, but at the same time you know that you're doing this necessarily for the other individual, or it could be, or you're doing it for yourself in a sense that I always wanted to have that camaraderie with somebody to be able to like kind of in a sense almost bro out but yet be able to share what we have and think that's sacred and we're going to just actually have to cut to a quick commercial break and after the break we're going to cut to potentially some ig questions or maybe yeah. talk about the same thing we've been talking about because <laughs> it seems questions. to just keep going but anyways after a quick commercial break we'll be right back Isn't our audio sounding sexier than normal? Wondering why? It's thanks to our member-only community. We have a member-only Patreon account where we share all kinds of exclusive content and behind-the-scenes footage of ourselves. It's the only platform where we share the more intimate side of ourselves and are so happy to have it. Membership starts at only $5 a month and gives you access to our sexy blog, never-before-seen travel photos, a chance to join in on our monthly live stream smoke show, and more. Not only that, you are directly supporting us, which means we get to invest more into our biz and get things like a sexy new mics and hiring a videographer. Visit patreon.com slash sexuninterrupted and choose a membership tier today. Welcome back to Sex Uninterrupted with Tara and James. We have had a great show talking about how to apply Tantra to your life and to your relationship and to non-monogamy. And we've been promising this one for a while. We're going to do some IG questions because I, I did ask them and I I do appreciate getting questions from social media. It's nice because it gives me a good direction of where to go. So I'm going to start heavy. <laughs> How can you deprogram yourself from what religion has taught you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get this one a lot. Not even just religion. I think I need deprogramming. But anyways. Just living in the world, we all need deprogramming. Awareness. Yeah. Of yourself. The awareness is... Awareness. Just bringing it back to Vigilant awareness. awareness. And knowing th- or feeling like you do need deprogramming, that's the first step to awareness. Admitting it. That's true. Yeah. Just awareness. knowing that that is... Well, uh, like I, I said, I've, we've we've talked about that, uh, me and Aaron, and we've even said like talking about it when we were at our, our social, and it was like we just need to be deprogrammed from thinking a specific way has to be this way, mm-hmm. right? When it can be so many other ways, yeah. and so many other ways of experiencing something, and it's like our, my thought process goes to. I want to bang, so let's get it in and let's shove it in as many times as you hu- humanly possibly can before you explode. <laughs> like, the conditioned yeah, way of and that conditioned things. way of thinking of that's how sex should be. Like again, I still like do the foreplay and that sort of stuff, but there's also the times where I'm like, I really just want to get it in, but it's not that. It's got to be more <laughs> like present. no, yeah. <laughs> Tara's sitting here going, no, not today. So the way to to finish answering that question to deprogram yourself from the the conditioning of your uh, religion, the religion, mm-hmm. should email us. Email us. Okay. I'll, give you, I'll give you some techniques. Just question. Okay. Question, just everything. question everything and be vigilantly aware. That awareness will absorb all the shit back into it, all the noise of that conditioning. All the mm-hmm. awareness will absorb it all. It just takes time and question continued and vigilance. I'm saying vigilantly applied awareness. Yeah. I like that. To bring it back to self. Yeah. 
Are you All gonna right. do the next question? Oh, okay. You can pick one out. Oh, okay. Tara's allowing me to pick one. Um, <laughs> so uh, one of the questions here is, can it be done alone? And I think we just went through that. Yes. So it's the best it way to start. Has yes. to be done alone first. <laughs> Yes. So what is the best thing you took from learning about Tantra? Well, I feel like I'm just a baby in it all, and I know very little. Interesting. Just that there's so much more than we already know about, and that's exciting. Mm -hmm. I like yeah. that. Do you want me to ask another one? Sure. All right. Uh, how much time do you have to set aside to embrace <laughs> Tantra and everything it has to offer? <laughs> Every moment. 30 minutes a day. <laughs> Every moment. Of Five days of a week. Day, all the time. <laughs> it yeah. is. Yeah. Everything is that stuff. You can do it while you're driving. We're talking about presence, right? We're talking about consciousness or awareness, which are all different words for the same thing. Right. Everything is that. There is nothing that you can think of that is not that. Right. So there's not a moment that passes by that's not about that. Unless you are completely identified with the noise in your head meaning not present. Mm -hmm. Always thinking about the past or the future, not being ever present. As long as you're dominated by thoughts, you will always suffer. You will always be in this fragmented, dualistic state. There's no so, tantra there. There's no yoga. So set his time as much humanly possible to start becoming more present. Just well, be. Just be present. Just, just be. be. There you go. Just be. 24-7. That's all you can do. It's the most natural thing in the world. I like it. Tara, next question. Why does it feel good and right with some people and then with others it doesn't? There's a lot of ways to answer that. I know. Right? <laughs> I don't know. For, for me, I know that I'm definitely very sensitive to, yeah. to energies. energies. And if I feel somebody isn't present with me, especially if I'm with a, a man and he's like really fixated on watching his wife, I, mm -hmm. that doesn't feel good to me. Yeah. You hear that in the lifestyle. Yeah. That happens. Yeah. Interesting that that happens. Well, it's because oh, it's yeah. not shocking that they're not present with you because people just generally are not present. Yeah. yeah well, but then not I body think aware, it, not present, not sensation aware. I think sometimes it goes to the fact of like, you always also have your partner, your significant mm -hmm. other's best interest in mind. And you want them to see them. And like we got our, one of our questions during our seminar was, uh, how um, do you be more aware with your significant other? But again, or to see them so fulfilled and happy is the reason why most people are in a non-monogamous relationship was to see them so fulfilled and happy. Their significant other, yeah. But... Again, th I think that goes to the point of like a lot of guys want to watch and make sure that their significant other is being fulfilled and happy and that But I can not... tell the difference between that and them almost like in a hot wife position where they like to just watch see. Them. getting off on that. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And they're just disconnecting from you. So for me, that's what makes it feel not good versus good. Is definitely the presence. Yeah, I mean, is is the person's question coming really specifically from like uh, really non-monogamous? I don't know. I just po place, posted. You know? um, what is, is your tantra questions? I think it applies to everything. Either you. Well, I just mean. You connect with somebody. That means you you're don't. having a shared experience, and like what you're talking about when the man is not present with you, he's having his own experience. So yeah. if you two are together experiencing something together noticing each other that's a connection and sometimes that doesn't happen mm -hmm. right interesting and then i think the last one of the last questions we have here is what is a good way to get your partner interested in tantra <laughs> this is like how <laughs> i get ones about the lifestyle and i'm like well you can't what is a good way to get your partner interested in tantra yeah stop talking about Tantra with them. <laughs> well, no. And if it turns into this big thing, that's like big spiritual, quote unquote, spiritual thing that they like suddenly have to get on board with, then you'll probably never get your partner. That might sound intimidating. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. we've gotten that question even about the swinger lifestyle. It's yeah, like, how do you? Con our biggest question is, how do I convince my partner to get into a non-monogamous relationship? And it's like. You don't convince you do. anybody of this lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's either you understand it and this is what you want to achieve. You don't convince it. Like we always say, move as fast as the slowest person. 
I, I say a lot of um, healthy sexual dialogue is what I, I say kind of helps you get to the lifestyle mm -hmm. and practicing a healthy sexual dialogue because a lot of people don't have a sexual dialogue. So both people have to be into it. Exactly. I think yeah. the best way to get your partner on board with Tantra is to show them how well Tantra is working for you. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you're starting with yourself anyway. So you say, hey, I found this awesome thing. Do you want to join me? Want to try it? Mm -hmm. And then just keep <clears throat> and being then be. the... <laughs> <laughs> and just keep being that just being. almost role model to yeah. show them how show them. how it's positively affecting you. That's one way for sure. You could learn you could take a tantric massage course and then surprise your partner with a, yeah. an actual tantric right. like yoni or lingam yeah. massage that'll probably get them on board pretty quick if, yeah if um yeah yeah uh, no i think it's great i think it's a great way like it's almost like a uh tara doesn't like this word but it's a segue so you show them Why do I like that word? You, and then do you have a hate on for the word segue? I didn't know I did. <laughs> I said it three times in a show and she kind of was like, no, don't stop saying it. But anyways, <laughs> it's, but it, like, again, learn That's to true. experience yeah. it for yourself and then you're easily able to share those experiences. And so you're going down that path of becoming present with yourself and being able to share that with your partner. And then maybe they'll take hold of just understanding how it works for you. It helps you. Well, plus they'll see to, I mean ask Alyssa what do I look like when I come upstairs after two or three hours of <laughs> practice alone bright and alive just you can see it in your just, eyes and just just be around your partner like that and they'll be yeah, like I want I want some of that to be that vibrant yeah and energized I want some of that good stuff mm -hmm. get some of that mm -mm good <laughs> That's, that's all the questions. I don't know if you guys want to leave the listeners with a piece of advice or a little bit of... Oh, know? I got advice. I'm sure you do. I don't have... I generally don't give advice. <laughs> what? I probably do. I shouldn't say that. Um, my advice is to keep on... That's it. That's my advice. Keep on? on. Okay. You, I gave you two on. minutes and you gave yeah. me keep on. Just keep be. On. <laughs> be. <laughs> all right. We're going to just be for the next uh, two yeah, hours. That's uh, all you just can kidding, do. But. Actually, you guys should share your jungle retreat. We have a jungle retreat, yeah. uh, tantric uh, retreat. couples retreat. We'll only take five couples with us, max five couples, mm -hmm. to an eco reserve, an eco reserve, yeah, mm -hmm. in the Colombian jungles on the Looks northern cool. coastline. Yeah. Uh, that happens in March. We do that retreat, and we have some neo tantra for swingers. Um, what would you call them? Workshops, Workshops or ceremonies? We can call them play ceremonies. We call play play ceremonies. That's yeah. good. Mindfulness for the non-monogamous. We mentioned that last time. We have those coming up starting in the new year, um, one Friday every month. For how long? Club. For well, maybe forever. With a door. Okay. Yeah. For the door with the door social club, we'll be doing that. And if you go to our website, which is Academy of Tantric Science. Dot com. There's all sorts of um, hatha yoga, tantra training programs. And if you go to our website, tantriclifemaking.com that we just launched literally yesterday. <laughs> what? This is, our, this is for our own stuff because we just launched our, we're about to release our first podcast episode of a show we're calling Tantric Yay. Life Making Sex, Play and Cosmic Partnership yep. with the Apple Bottoms. Mm -hmm. so, so you can check out our website tantriclifemaking.com or facebook.com slash tantriclifemaking and the links are all on our, our show okay. notes too well if they're all in the well, show notes oh, yeah. and they don't, yeah. I didn't need to say all no but it's well, awesome no, it's good to so hear thank you guys for again website. for being on the show um that was one of the most amazing talks again and I can't wait to practice tomorrow <laughs> So I'm gonna masturbate for three hours. <laughs> thank you to the listeners for listening. Uh, and if you guys would like to know more or want to hear more, you can obviously email us at sex.uninterrupted at gmail.com. You can also check out our website. We'll probably add these two sexy cats as our uh, podcast sort of friends. Yes. And if you guys want to get social with us, we said them in the intro, but it's Instagram at sex.uninterrupted and Twitter, Twitter is SX Uninterrupted. You can catch us next week at 5 p.m. 
Eastern, no, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern on the Sexy Lifestyle Network. And until then, keep, keep it, it sexy. sexy. Thank you for tuning into the show. If you enjoyed the sexy show, you can find more at sexuninterrupted.com. Don't forget that you can also follow us on Twitter at sxuninterrupted, Instagram at sex.uninterrupted, Facebook, and YouTube. If you want to directly support what we do, please check out patreon.com slash sexuninterrupted today and join our community. 